Good morning, I'm Dan Spieler. Just one week now until the Indy 500 and about two weeks away from the end of Indy's mask mandate. We'll talk with Congressman Larry Bouchon about the path out of this pandemic. But first, Justin Kolar starts our coverage with a look at what Indy's mayor and Republican counselors are saying now. We, if we're going to follow the science, let's follow the science. The CDC issued new guidance last week, saying fully vaccinated people no longer need to wear masks. Large cities and states have also dropped their mask mandates, but Indianapolis, specifically Marion County, will hold on until June 7th. June 7th would get us beyond one of the largest events, if not the largest event in the world. The Indy 500, which will allow 135,000 masked individuals to gather in Marion County. How is it that the, the risk of the virus spread is less in the Donut counties than it is in Marion County? It, it doesn't, it's not a magic line that when you cross it, all of a sudden you're at more of a risk. Mayor Hogsett says the risk outweighs the reward, and masking a little bit longer will be better in the long run. The positivity rate in Indianapolis is above 5%. In cities like Chicago and New York, it's around 3%. The long story short, it gives us two and a half more weeks to see where we are at that time uh, and therefore make a, 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 a more informed and better decision about going forward. But Republicans aren't convinced. I have a very strong hesitation to agreeing to go two and a half weeks and then we'll lift the mask mandate. And now they're taking matters into their own hands. Let's let the people decide how they live their lives. All right, that was Justin Kola reporting. In a statement, Council President Bob Osley said the council will await further guidance from local health officials regarding changes to the existing orders and take action if and when it's appropriate. Now, this week, we also heard from Marion County Health Director, Dr. Virginia Kane. This welcome news for our community does not mean that the end of the pandemic is here yet. Our progress gives us hope that there's light at the end of the pandemic tunnel, but we can't be blindsided by, by the light. A number of other capacity changes in the works come June 7th. We have all of that listed on our website. Again, Indies Council meets on Monday, June 7th, two weeks from tomorrow. In the meantime, mask mandates and vaccine hesitancy are still a big topic in the nation's capital. And this week I spoke with an Indiana congressman who's also a doctor, Representative Larry Bouchon. I asked him about that decision in Indy to keep the mask mandate in place another two weeks. Should they eliminate those mandates now as opposed to two weeks from now? Yeah, well, first of all, I think the guidance from the CDC was a long time coming. I mean, if you look at the history of vaccination uh, for all kinds of diseases, you know, once you're adequately vaccinated, you don't catch the disease, but you also don't spread it. And so I think uh, there was a little bit of political in influence there uh, along the way. And uh, I think that's unfortunate, but I think it's good that they've done that the mask mandate has been removed uh, because of the scientific data, right? The medical facts. You know, I'm not going to comment on whether local communities like Indianapolis or certain counties or loca locales uh, or even certain businesses decide whether or not they follow the guidelines. I, I would hope that they would, but I totally understand that, you know, there's local issues involved and I'll leave that up to the local leaders. You and others in, in the GOP uh caucus, the doctor's caucus, have called for those mandates uh, to expire in the halls of, of Congress. Some members yes. were, were fined this week for not wearing their masks. How do you and the other doctors in that caucus manage that dynamic right now? Are you, are you still wearing one on the House floor? Yes, I wear my mask on the House floor because at this point, that's the rule on the House floor uh, directed through the Speaker's office. And I think it's incumbent on us to uh, follow the rules that are in place. That said, I, you know, yesterday, Kevin McCarthy, the minority leader, and 20 of us from the doctor's caucus did a privileged resolution on the House floor uh, re requesting that Speaker Pelosi follow CDC guidelines. I'm hopeful that she will. Her reasoning is because some members aren't vaccinated on both sides of the aisle, uh, I, I suspect. But that's not a good reason because, you know, at this point, every member and staff have had access to vaccines. If they choose not to get one, that's their decision. But the rest of us shouldn't be wearing masks uh, because of that decision that they have made. 
I mean, when does this end, right? When do you take away the mask mandate? Because a percentage of the American people, maybe 20%, probably will never be, get vaccinated. So we all, we all can't continue to wear masks because people make a personal choice. Let's talk about that vaccine hesitancy. You and others in the doctor's caucus recently put together a PSA encouraging people uh, to get vaccinated. Will this new guidance from the CDC, do you think, encourage more people to get the vaccine? Well, I think it will, yes, because I think there'll be uh, situations where people's employers will uh, start to encourage it or maybe even mandate that. And so I think when it comes down to uh, the personal decision, people have to decide whether they want to go back to work or whether they want to get the vaccine. I think the government's not going to drive that. I don't believe the federal government should be mandating that the citizens of the United States get the vaccine. You think We're employers in- should be able to do so? Well, that's a, that's up to them. Again, like I said earlier, uh, as it relates to the mask mandate, I think it's completely up to them. I think that, and uh, some will make that decision. You know, hospitals for years have mandated that you have the flu vaccine if you're going to work in the in the hospital. So, but I, you know, I'm hopeful that people will uh, get the vaccine. I think one of the things that would help is if we can get final FDA approval, not just emergency use authorization for the vaccines. And I know Pfizer has recently uh, completed uh, their process to get final approval. And I think that will help. I I also want to ask about the January 6th commission. Uh, Nearly every Republican member of the Indiana delegation voted against this uh, 9-11 style commission, including the the former VP's brother, Congressman Pence. Why did you vote against it? And and how do you respond to Democrats who say the GOP is trying to, in in their words, whitewash the events of that day? Well, first of all, I mean, it's being compared to the 9-11 Commission on purpose by the Democrats and Speaker Pelosi, because, of course, 9-11, we were attacked by terrorists. And there's no one out there that doesn't think that we should have investigated why uh, we were open to being attacked by terrorists. This isn't isn't the same thing. Would you not describe this as some form of domestic terrorism? Well, I mean, I think it probably was a domestic insurgency, and that's different than terrorism. Uh, because the goal was by the people that attacked the Capitol to prevent President, you know, President Biden from becoming president by stopping the uh, process uh, that was happening where we were certifying the Electoral College votes. By the way, uh, I did not vote for the objections. I voted to certify the election because I thought it was my constitutional duty, and so did Vice President Pence. So I think what has happened with this commission is We've gotten to a point where Speaker Pelosi has agreed to have the same number of appointees from Democrats and Republicans, but she maintained that the majority would appoint the staff, including the staff director and other staff members in consultation with the minority. But what that means is that the entire staff of this commission will be appointed by the Democrats. And the other thing is, is it clearly outlines in, uh, in the bill that the administration will have some of its agencies engaged in the process And of course, it's controlled by Democrats. So, you know, I think Speaker Pelosi put this up in in its current form for political reasons. And uh, you saw 175 Republicans vote against it for that reason. We want a balanced, fair, uh, accountable uh, commission that gets to the facts. uh, And I'm not afraid of the facts. I, I want the facts. And I think the American people do, too. All right, that's Congressman Larry Bouchon. Meantime, Representative Trey Hollingsworth was the only Republican from Indiana to vote for this bipartisan commission. In a statement, he said, an assault on police anywhere is an assault on police everywhere, and I will absolutely investigate attacks on our officers to the full extent. I'll always uphold the rule of law and defend our men and women in blue. So he says, in his words, we're left with two choices, a bipartisan commission with an equal number of Republicans and Democrats, or in his words, a Pelosi commission focused on repeating the media's narrative. Hollings were saying, quote, that's an easy choice for me. Indiana Democrats were critical of the GOP's stance. My Republican colleagues, you know, they were elected on the same ballot. Um, Why aren't they objecting to their own wins last year? And why are they propping up a failed president who lost in the House, uh, the Senate and the White House? And they continue to stick by a person who has shown that loyalty is a one-way street with him and, and, and would throw... Uh, any one of them under the bus if it met his objectives. Now, in a statement, after Wednesday's vote, Carson added, many of my Republican colleagues are trying to gaslight Americans about what happened on January 6th. Don't buy it. He says it's an attempt to evade accountabilities for the, for the, accountability for the party's embrace 
of Trump's big lie. Next, this proposal to form a commission heads to the Senate, where its passage seems unlikely. I spoke this week with Indiana Senator Mike Braun. We've had all kinds of committee meetings on it. It's probably the most publicized incident that's occurred since I've been here. I think it's been sensationalized a little bit and trying to generalize broader than what occurred that day. In a statement, the Indiana Democratic Party said Hoosiers are witnessing a political party show them American democracy and national security are values they no longer carry as elected officials. They say this vote reveals Republicans have lost their identity and that their blind partisanship has no limits. We'll talk with our panel about it next. Plus, we're going to hear from Governor Eric Holcomb next on his lawsuit against the General Assembly and his legal battle with Attorney General Todd Rokita. We'll talk with our panel about that as well. And more deadly crime in Indianapolis. We'll talk with our panel about the mayor's handling of this year's record-breaking violence. Next. <laughs>